Right, so this morning I'm with uh, Beth Pascal, and um, for many of you will be aware that she completed the Bob Graham uh, last weekend in a record time of 14 hours, 34 minutes, um, which is an incredible time given the circumstances, which we'll go into uh, as we talk. Um, but ideally, what I'd like to kind of start with is just find out a, a bit more about you, you know, like, when you started running, whether it was running you started, you know, what did you kind of do when you were younger? Um, so I've been running ultras and stuff for probably about six or seven years now. Um, but I've always run a little bit. It's not like I did nothing and then just started running ultras. So yes. I did a lot of sports when I was younger. Um, I did a lot of athletics cross country at school and I was I was quite good at it, but not like amazing, you know um and then I went to uni and I was a lightweight rower for a few years um yeah. and trained pretty hard for that so I think that's that's my kind of first experience of uh really solid consistent training yeah. and I think I developed a strong endurance base from that and then I quit rowing um and I started running a little bit just as something that I could do to fit around the last couple of years of medical school and my first few years working as a as a doctor. Um, and I, I think my dad gave me a few books or I borrowed some of his books. Uh, I read Feet in the Clouds, uh, Born to Run, you know, all the kind of classic uh, ultra running or fell running books. Um, and yeah, that that really kind of inspired me to try to to run uh, longer distances. Yeah, so where, where were you actually born? Where was I born? Yeah. Uh, Somerset, Taunton. It's in Taunton, so, so it's not kind of fell related, it's not your typical fell environment where you, where you kind of grew up. So Absolutely. where did the kind of the, the love of the, the kind of hills and the fells come from? Well, I've always been into mountains. Yeah, um, yeah always, I've always loved, um, like when I was at school and stuff doing like Duke of Edinburgh award I was I absolutely loved being um outside and, and walking and being in the mountains um and certainly when I was growing up we were always they weren't fells but we were always spending time in in the hills and outside and things so I had that already um and I I was at yeah, I, I think it was, I think I, I heard about the Lakeland 100 um, and I heard it was a kind of a, a legit 100 mile race in the UK. And that's, I started training for that. And that's when I started going to the lakes a bit more and got to know the Lake District a, a lot better. Um, and then, it, yeah, kind of went on from there, I suppose. Yeah. So was, that, so was the Lakeland, was that your first, what you would say is your first big kind of ultra 100 miler kind of big race? Yes. Yeah. I think I'd done maybe one 40 mile race prior to that yeah. but that, I don't think I'd done any other ultras at all yeah um, 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 and what was your experience because obviously the Lake 100 is a you know it's a tough a tough route you know so what was your kind of what did you learn from that do you think that's kind of helped you now so when I went into the Lake 100 my plan was to just do it once and then I could say I'd run 100 miles <laughs> and I would never have to do it again. <laughs> um, and I was really training just to finish it because I, I had, you know, when you start off like that, you have no idea. And now, you know, I know I can run 100 miles, but back then I really had no idea whether it was possible or not. Yeah. Um, and I ended up coming second to Debbie Martin Consani. Yeah. Um, and yeah completely took me by surprise um and my I kind of adjusted my goals at that point from giving up running <laughs> to actually do, doing a bit more um yeah. I just, yeah I guess I just realized that um I must have some talent for it yeah. um and yeah the race I absolutely loved everything about the race um uh yeah it went it went super well so um so yeah, that was kind of the beginning. That was definitely a, a, a kind of turning point in in the in, yeah it, in, my, in my ultra running career, I suppose. Yeah, and then you know you've obviously had quite a journey since then. You know, UTMB um, in the states as well. You know, of of those races, how would you can kind of compare 
something like the Bob Graham last weekend where you broke the record, how would you kind of rate that against some of the other achievements that you've done? Like if you had to pick, say, I know a top three or a top five of your achievements based on you know the experience and how fondly you look back on them how what how would you kind of rate them definitely in the top three the bob graham is it, it might even be at the top to be honest right which which surprised me <laughs> um because i've always kind of prioritized races but i think that's as mainly because with the bob graham i've always something i've always wanted to do but since jasmine uh, ran 1523 in 2016 yeah. I felt like I would be running for the second fastest Bob Graham time yeah. so so it's been I don't know less of a it, yeah I don't know I've just it, I've been putting it off basically even though I've always wanted to do it um, so yeah it took me by surprise that actually it, it you know it, it's amazing it, it feels so good and um, yeah I, I think it you know pff, might even mean more to me than any of the other races, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so what, what would be, if that was, say, say arguably that was your number one, mm -hmm. what, what do you think your kind of second and third out of the, the amazing stuff that you've already done would would be? Uh, Western States. Right. Would be probably number two. So why is that then? It's just such a cool race. <laughs> I just I just had a really I had a really good day um, and I love everything about the race. Um, I felt good from start to finish and and it was for me it, it wasn't something I didn't think I didn't think it would suit me very well um, because it's fairly runnable and fast and the heat yeah. as well. So I was really proud of myself from that point of view because I didn't I don't think a lot of people expected me to do well at Western States. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was really cool. And then I'd UTMB has to be in there, I suppose. Um, although I don't know, I I I love UTMB. Although Matt, my husband, the other day said that he always sees me at my worst at UTMB. <laughs> it's something I hadn't really thought about. Um, so See, yeah, now, I mean that is in worst is in because you're suffering so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. I kind of feel like my best race at UTMB is yet to come or I, I hope so anyway yeah. but I've never had a really good race there yeah it, it's tough though isn't it because you've you've not just got the climb you've not got the descent you've got the incredible heat you've got the altitude you've got the distance there's just so many it's just such a it's such a roller coaster route mm. and then you've got the roller coaster of, of the different kind of humidities that you go through for the cold it, it must be tough mm, mm. yeah it's really tough and I, I don't think anyone has a day at UTMB where they feel great from start to finish yeah so would um, you say UTMB is the, the toughest that you've done uh with the exception of Diagonal de Fou which is the 100 mile race in Reunion right. um which is just uh yeah it's something else <laughs> <laughs> that was that a one-off race? Is that a, a one-off, or, or do you fancy going I back? I love to go back. I love to go back. It's super, super cool. But it's it's well, it's over 100 miles, and it's so technical, so yeah. technical, and it's got you know 2,000 meter climbs in it, and ropes, and jungle, and heat, and yeah, yeah it's it's insane. it's insane. Yeah, yeah. So looking back to kind of the the, the Bob Graham. When when did you you know you kind of, you said about Jasmine you kind of looked at it and you kind of thought you were going to be this you know it's difficult to beat that time, and then obviously we've had the kind of coronavirus issues. So have you had to kind of have you been working throughout that period or did you have a period where you could actually train or how how did it kind of come about that you decided do you know what I think I will have a go at the the BG. It was back in March when it became apparent that there was going to be no racing for the foreseeable future. Um, and I had it in my mind, I, I do a Bob Graham. And it was the obvious thing to do, really. There wasn't really any thinking involved. It, to me, if I was going to do, the obvious thing to do was some sort of FKT or record attempt and nothing else in the UK meant means more to me, I suppose. Um, so I had the idea in March, Again, because there was so much uncertainty in March, April, May, 
we didn't really know whether when we'll be back running in the fells again i didn't you know fully commit to it i guess um so i've been training throughout but as as you know you know there were a couple of months where training was difficult as i said i don't live in the mountains um so i was confined to just doing lots of loops of my local woods and and i didn't feel particularly fit or enthusiastic about training <laughs> back, back then um and then when we were allowed to come back to the lakes, I did a couple of uh, runs on the course and then I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm all in, fully committed. I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Um, so I spent, uh, yeah, it, yeah, probably a couple of months uh, driving up once a week because we weren't allowed to stay up there. So it was, uh, you know, for me, it's a six hour, six or seven hour round trip and I'd try and get you know six eight ten hours of running in um yeah. and home again and, and back at work the next day there were a lot of mondays where i i wonder what on earth i was doing <laughs> <laughs> at work i'm just completely exhausted um yeah so yeah train really hard and then only in july really i've been able to stay up a couple of times and get some back-to-back -back training runs in yeah. so yeah i've spent as much time as i possibly can yeah. on the course mm. yeah. And you had you basically your your coach by Martin Cox and he kind of helped kind of well obviously helped with your coaching but he, he kind of seemed to do more than that he kind of seemed to really kind of step up as far as a kind of helping to kind of pull everything together mentally physically and, and, and get the whole thing going is that right? Yeah sure I mean it, it was clearly something that he was really excited about as well which was which was great and he has a lot of contacts in the Lake District. Uh, uh, he knows lots of fell runners, more than me. So he really helped to to get supporters together for me and that and that type of thing. And he's just been someone that I can, you know, bounce ideas off. And and yeah, his role just goes far beyond, you know, telling me what training to do. He just helps with every aspect of of you know training, racing, general day-to-day -day logistics of of everything to be honest yeah because you because you obviously you plan to do it on the Saturday mm. and then the weather window on the Saturday was looking rough and some of the guys who set off on the Friday night and had to run through the Saturday had horrendous first two legs yeah so yeah. you you took the decision to to pull it forward 24 yeah. hours which kind of is an absolutely totally sensible decision but then suddenly you have that major logistic of all your paces, your supports, your, your crew, everything then kind of goes a bit out of the window because obviously people have got work and other commitments. Yeah. And, you know, like you mentioned before, the kind of fell running community, there was a lot of messaging going on amongst us about who who would be available, who could be, who's got a phone number of who and this, that, yeah, and the other. Yeah, yeah. Managed to pull it off. and And you actually ended up with a, with a, a kind of a lot smaller team than possibly what Jasmine or other people have gone around with. But do you think do you think all that kind of the fact that with the weather window, with the sudden stress of having to change it all, did it kind of take a bit of the pressure away in a sense? Because it was just kind of just suddenly all happening. So you didn't really have time to worry about what was going to happen because you were just in trying to make it happen mode. Um, I, you're right in that I didn't have a lot of time to think <laughs> in the, the few days beforehand. I didn't sleep a lot. It was, yeah, it was pretty stressful. Um, I didn't really feel pressure anyway, because yeah. no one was expecting me to break the record. I wasn't expecting to break the record. Um, so in a way I felt like I had nothing to lose. Yeah. Um, but in a way I also, I probably felt a bit more responsibility having done that last minute change and I know some people had taken days off work and things in order su to support me so perhaps I felt a little bit more like I ought not just give up halfway around <laughs> yeah. um but yeah I didn't really feel pressure as such to, to break the record at all because yeah as I said I had, I had nothing to lose really yeah. and I, I certainly would would bet against myself for doing that yeah and you didn't have, and you didn't have a, a, a kind of public tracker there was no there's no announcement beforehand so there wasn't kind yeah. of that kind of social media expectation of 
you go like I think a lot of people kind of knew you were doing it yeah. but very much on the kind of down low so so I suppose that took some of the, that element of pressure away didn't it yeah, perhaps and I think yes I did want to keep it fairly quiet um I think perhaps the lack of tracker and the fact that I made no announcement about it was in part disorganization <laughs> <laughs> it's just another thing to think about you know um so if I did it again I probably would have got a tracker yeah. um but yeah I I um yeah I think I just I was just too busy thinking about other things and didn't really think about it yeah um, yeah yeah so, so what about because obviously you know when you'd been up in kind of May and June it had been really dry it had been you know if you'd been able to do do around then maybe not in such the heat but but with the ground conditions mm you can confidently think right this is going to be uber fast this is absolutely perfect underfoot conditions mm -hmm. but since then you know we've had a lot of rain and leg one in particular it can be horrendous and it, it was pretty horrendous by the time it came for you to do your attempt yeah and you know knowing your, your kind of schedule did you kind of think right and because because I'm going to say this, but I know what you actually ended up doing. But kind of did did you kind of think, right? I maybe need to be a bit more kind of cautious because I, you know, it's going to be a lot tougher underfoot. It's going to use up more energy. Or did you think, right? I'm just going to I'm just going to run it and just see see how it feels. Yeah, the the latter I would say. Yeah. So yeah, I had a schedule that I worked out quite carefully. Um, but at the end of the day, it was just a guide. So yeah, I wasn't gonna you know, chase splits on the yeah. bog terrain, particularly. Um, but I also hadn't planned to kind of back off either. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that that leg one, when you consider the conditions, that leg one split in particular, because that's my favourite one, because that's my that's that's my little local <laughs> one. And that's the one when I did our Billy Bland challenge, I did that one with Kirsty, mm -hmm. Kirsty Hall and we did that. And it was an incredible time, really. 2.34 in those conditions when you think that, I think that Billy did it in 2.16. So that's only 18 minutes slower than, than than when he did his. And, you know, when I kind of, because when you sent your sheet through and I saw that, I thought, that, that is so impressive to be able to do that. And the, But then you sustained it. You just didn't drop off. And actually, when you look at your times compared to, and again, it's, shouldn't really compare to, to Billy's times as such but you actually kept really strong throughout and while Billy was obviously kind of faster on those earlier legs you were actually by the time you got to leg four and five you were only minutes behind what he was doing on those legs which is incredible you know so is that is that kind of like um do you think that because there wasn't the intensity of racing do you think because there hasn't you know, you haven't had a number of races already this year because you were able to maybe you were worried that you weren't able to train as hard early on, but actually you you still maintained fitness. Then you had a really good training block, didn't have any racing in your legs and you were able to do this. Do you think that's made a massive difference to how well you've been able to go? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're right. Normally in any six month period so the last time I raced was back in February you'd have a series of tapers racing rests train again taper again race rest and 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 yeah to have that consistency even though I as I said I didn't feel like training was great throughout um must have made a huge difference it, it must have I, I can't think of any other any other explanation <laughs> to be honest so, uh, so do you think that is that something that you might take forward or, or do you enjoy or do you like what would you rather have would you rather have say two amazing performances a year or six good races like what or, or, or do you not think it, it kind of would work like that no I think I think you're right and I think it's something that that myself and probably other ultra runners think about a lot because we I think everyone knows that if you race once a year then you would do a lot better in that one race. Yeah. Um, but it's a compromise between, but we just love racing, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> it's yeah. really difficult to have that self-restraint. Um, and I think I'm conscious that, you know, this isn't, I'm not going to be racing like this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, and to, it's just about making a compromise. So how many races can I fit in without each one of those races being compromised too much? Yeah. So I would say it's somewhere in somewhere in between. Um, yeah. 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 So so where so so kind of this year's definitely right off for races unless you're bobbing over to Switzerland to do the ultra tracks. But like next year, what what have you kind of got your eyes set on for for next year? I'm hoping to repeat what I had planned for this year. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, so I was actually going to have some time off work this year from yeah. six months from February to August, which didn't happen in the end this year. Yeah. So I'm hoping that will happen next year and I will go out to the States for three months um, and do Lake Sonoma, uh, Western States. Then I'll come back and go to UTMB. Right. So that would be the rough kind of plan for the year. Yeah. So three. So essentially kind of three big races. Um, maybe another one in the winter but... <laughs> um, but yeah I think you know there's still a lot of uncertainty and and yeah. it, it, unless I'm really confident that racing is going to continue as normal I probably won't take the risk of going out to the states for a few months because you know it's a big under, a big undertaking yeah. um but yeah I in the ideal world I'd like to do western states and UTMB again yeah so is that you as a family? So you and your partner go over there or would you have to do that on your own because he's got commitments over here or? Yeah, he uh, he will be able to take some holiday or all his holiday to go over. But um, yeah, he won't be able to stay out for three months for sure. Yeah. Probably three weeks. Um, I, I plan this year to go and stay out in Flagstaff um, yeah. where I know some other runners um, and Lucy Bartholomew was going to come out and we were going to share a, share a place together and things. So it was all kind of, Oh, out, but yeah, yeah. So well, can happen next year. Yeah, absolutely. So just going kind of back to your, your, your Bob Gray, what would you say is your of the actual attempt beforehand when you were doing kind of recce and things? What was your what was your favourite leg when you were kind of recceing? Which which leg did you enjoy the most when you were kind of recceing? Uh, three, probably. Three, oh, um, three or four. Is, is that because of the technicality of them? Because they're just a bit more, you know, they're, they're a bit, well, they're tougher, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Um, I find leg one a bit boring. Sorry, yeah. I, know, I know you like that leg. Well, I, can, I can literally run, run it and run home. <laughs> so it's dead easy. <laughs> um, uh, leg, yeah, leg two is all right. I don't know, three and four are probably, they're just the most interesting legs, aren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that probably the ones that they're the ones that I've also spent much more time wrecking because they're the they're the hardest navigation wise yeah. as well. So yeah, I, I love both those legs. So did that pan out when you actually did the attempt? When you actually did the run itself again with which, which was your favourite leg when you actually were doing the the run last weekend? Yeah, um, I mean I enjoyed all of them if I'm honest. Yeah, <laughs> I really enjoyed the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, probably the later legs, probably the second half of leg three and then leg four and leg five, when I felt a bit more confident yeah. that it wasn't all going to go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just could relax a bit more and, yeah. yeah, really enjoyed it. I think the first couple of legs, it, it was really fun, but I, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, a bit of uncertainty. What have I, what have I done this? <laughs> this is all going to go very wrong so, the, so were there any moments and kind of you know like in all long runs you always get those kind of slightly kind of highs and lows were, were there times where you where you struggled where you, you know where you struggled physically or mentally um I think compared to other long runs I've done there were very few kind of uh low low moments yeah I felt pretty good all the way. There's certainly no points where I really struggled. I'm not saying it was easy. It wasn't easy. But um, I think uh, the beginning of leg three, I, I I think it was the first time I felt not quite as fresh as I had. It's a tough climb, though, isn't it? 
Yeah, so it was, it was going up to Calf Crag and uh, Sergeant Man where I thought we were only just hitting the splits and then we were down a couple of minutes on Sergeant Man. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is going to be the beginning of the end. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but then things improved again and we started making up time again so maybe I was just a bit out on my schedule there yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's really hard isn't it to, to to know exactly especially with all the different conditions to get that schedule absolutely perfect and like I think like you've just touched on then for other people doing their Bob Graham you can you you can't you can't be too worried about individual when you've got to get to certain place at certain times because because the circumstances on the actual day have such an impact that you can make up lose time mm. very much depending on where you are aren't you I mean I was fairly happy with I think my schedule was pretty good in that I had run all the legs at record pace in training yeah. and I basically based my schedule off that yeah so I knew and I'd done that more than once so I knew I was my schedule was pretty good yeah um but but yeah you're right I mean things can kind of change on the day and and obviously I was a little bit out there um yeah. but and then uh I got a bit of cramp um on broad stand um yeah. which was another point where I mean it, it was fine but I I thought oh maybe this is things are going to go downhill from here a, a, again um and I had a little did you have a did you did you have a rope there did you did you did you have a rope there did you and do you, and do you think you got the cramp because you then starting to have to kind of scramble and climb so you're actually using your muscles in a very different way yeah yeah so it was I mean it was I noticed it after broad stand on the rest of the climb up Scarfell and yeah. I think it was just you don't realize but it's the the climbing move is hard I did have a rope so I was basically pulling up a rope but but doing that after you've been running for 40 like hard for 40 miles yeah. feels very different from yeah. if you're doing it fresh yeah. um, and I think it was just the strain really and after that I yeah I was getting a bit of cramp um and I had that intermittently on the climbs um, yeah. for the rest of it but it was very manageable very manageable like, I guess I I did back off a little bit on some of the climbs later on because I just didn't want to make it worse. Yeah. Um, even though my legs kind of on the whole felt good. Yeah. Um, and, and cramp is something I've never, never had before, really, in a race. Yeah. Um, but I've never done a Bob Graham before, so. <laughs> now, did, now, did you use poles at all or did you just run? I use poles on all legs except leg three. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you do you use them just for ascending or do you use them for descending as well? Or how, how do you generally use your poles? It's for climbing. Yeah. 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 So I use them on all. Yeah. All the climbs on legs one, two, four and five. Yeah. 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 And, and have you used poles for long? Uh, yeah, I, I'm used to using poles in sort of big mountain ultras. So, yeah. 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 And do you, and do you, do you, do you, but you obviously do find there's a there's a kind of big difference. Did you ever has anybody actually shown you how to use them, or have you just kind of kind of self self taught polar? Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever shown me how to use them. But I I don't know. I I guess I've used them a lot. Um, yeah. And I feel like my technique is okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no no one's ever actually told me how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But no. I feel but if you use them enough, probably you'll kind of work out a technique that suits you, perhaps. Yeah, no, yeah. no definitely, definitely. And you, you, when it came to the the kind of in between each of the kind of legs, I think you stopped for a minute once. So you were very much. That was of, just that was just a guess, yeah. So I think it was a kind of about, yeah, I don't know, thirty seconds or less. Pretty much, pretty much straight through. Grab a drink. Grab some yeah. drink. Thing and, and, and kind of crack on so, yeah. so when you're kind of going at pace like that how did you actually you know what did you what did you kind of eat drink you know what what did you kind of fuel yourself on for the whole round so mainly gels yeah um, yeah I, I don't think for me it's it's kind of a short effort yeah <laughs> so anything longer I'd take more solid food but um so I yeah gels um and some carb drinks some mountain fuel yeah. um and yeah the odd slice of banana bread um 
I love bread. I, do you know, I'm on a bit today. I've been ordered by my daughter to make some banana bread. Really? <laughs> it's a secret fuel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a glass of Coke uh, yeah. at each of the road crossings, and that that was it, really. Yeah, it's a pretty, so quite a liquidy kind of, mm. diet in, in a sense, yeah. Mm. And then, so how does that compare to, say, for example, when you do the UTMB? You, I imagine you're going a lot further, so you you rely more on solids when you're doing the UTMB. Yeah, certainly I have a bit, a few more solids. Yeah. Uh, I mean, UTMB is famous for its noodle soup. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, I'd have something longer probably. Uh, something yeah, some more solids on something longer. But yeah, this is certainly something you can get away with just just gels. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You use the you use the spring energy gel. So when you when you say because when you say gels, you're not talking your traditional types of gels. Yeah. You're kind of more foodie based kind of gel. Yeah. So they've got kind of some rice in them and a bit more complex carbohydrate. Yeah. 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 It seems to work. Would you consider a winter round? I hadn't thought about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hmm. Um, I, I, as I, I, yeah, I haven't considered one so far. I think it depends what else is going on in the winter. If yeah. we're completely stuck again, yeah, <laughs> no travel and nothing else to do, then yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's honestly something I haven't thought about. <laughs> no, because no. it's funny, one, isn't it? Because winter, actually, if you get that, those perfect kind of conditions in the, in the winter when you get that kind of hard kind of frost actually it can be very you know so it's a leg one where it's boggy suddenly actually becomes a very fast leg the, you know you just might get a little bit a little bit kind of slippy on the rock but everything else is actually really fast going mm -hmm. it's just the light isn't it i suppose mm -hmm. bloody cold <laughs> i'm not good with the cold no good with the cold better, better with the sun so. yeah Cool. Right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'll kind of do a little finished thing now. So I um, hope everybody's enjoyed um, listening to what Beth's got to say. I've really enjoyed it. Um, very interesting. And hopefully your plans will work out for next year and, you know, the coronavirus issues will, will get under control and you'll get to go out to the States um, and do one of your favourite races with the Western States and obviously also back to the UTMB. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Well done and uh, good luck into the future. Cool. Thanks a lot, Rupert. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.